As the embodied soul continuously passes in this body from boyhood to youth to old age, the soul similarly passes into another body at death. A sober person is not bewildered by such a change. Uh, 正如体困的灵魂在身体里经历着童年、青年、老年的变化一样，躯体死亡时，灵魂便进入另一个躯体，智者不会为此变化所困惑。Purport: <coughs> Since every living entity is an individual soul, each is changing his body every moment, manifesting sometimes as a child, sometimes as a youth and sometimes as an old man, yet the same spirit soul is there and does not undergo any change. This individual soul finally changes the body at death and transmigrates to another body. And since it is sure to have another body in the next birth, either material or spiritual, there was no cause for lamentation by Arjuna on account of death, neither for Bhishma nor for Drona, for whom he was so much concerned. Rather, he should rejoice for their changing bodies from old to new ones, thereby rejuvenating their energy. Such changes of body account for varieties of enjoyment or suffering according to one's according to one's work in life. So Bhishma and Drona 
being noble souls, we are surely going to have spiritual bodies in the next life, or at least life in heavenly bodies for superior enjoyment of material existence. So in either case there was no cause of lamentation. Any man who has perfect knowledge of the constitution of the individual soul, the super soul and nature, both material and spiritual, is called a dira or a most sober man. Such a man is never deluded by the change of body. The Mayavada theory of oneness of the spirit soul cannot be entertained on the ground that the spirit soul cannot be cut into pieces as a fragmental portion. Such cutting into different individual souls would make the Supreme clevable or changeable against the principle of the Supreme Souls being unchangeable. As confirmed in the Gita, the fragmental portions of the Supreme exist eternally, Sanatana, and are called Shara, that is, they have a tendency to fall down into material nature. These fragmental portions are eternally so, even after liberation, the individual soul remains the same, fragmental. But once liberated, he lives an eternal life in bliss and knowledge with the Personality of Godhead. The theory of reflection can be applied to the Super Soul, who is present in each and every individual body and is known as the Paramatma. He is different from the individual living entity. When the sky is reflected in water, the reflections represent both the sun and the moon and the stars also. The stars can be compared to the living entities and the sun or the moon to the Supreme Lord. The individual fragmental spirit soul is represented by Arjuna and the Supreme Soul is the Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna. They are not on the same level as it will be apparent in the beginning of the fourth chapter. If Arjuna is on the same level with Krishna and Krishna is not superior to Arjuna, then their relationship of inst instructor and instructed becomes meaningless. If both of them are deluded by the illusory energy, maya, then there is no need of one being the instructor and the other the instructed. Such instruction would be useless because in the clutches of maya no one can be an authoritative instructor. Under the circumstances it is admitted that Lord Krishna is the Supreme Lord, superior in position to the living entity, Arjuna, who is a forgetful soul deluded by Maya. Bishma或Jonacharya自然也不例外 人的今世之为决定着躯体的这种变化是带来享受还是招来折磨。Bishma和Jonacharya都是高尚的灵魂，下一世肯定可转入灵性之体，或者至少也会转入天堂人之躯，享受高级的物质存在，因此无论是哪
他们有不被躯体的变异所迷惑。假象中提了灵魂单一理论，这是不能接受的，因为灵魂不能被分割成碎片。如果灵魂能被分割成不同的个体灵魂的话，那么至尊的灵魂便也是可分割、可变异的。这根本违反了至尊的灵魂不可变异的原理。正如国家办歌所肯定的，至尊的片段部分永恒存在，被称为 s h a r a 但他们却有堕入物质自然的倾向。这些碎片部分永远如此，一旦解脱，它便永恒的与至尊人格守神一起生活在。喜乐的知识之中，反射的原理可用到超龄上。超龄处于每一个个体之中，却又与个体生物迥然不同。水中反映的天空有日月星辰，星辰可比作生物，日月可比作至尊主。阿朱罗纳代表的是碎片片段部分的个体灵魂，人格神圣菩萨就是超龄。他们并不属于同一个层面，这点在第四章的开篇会有更明确的阐述。如果他们处于同一层面，即 Krishna 不比 Arjuna 所处的层面高的话，那么他们之间施教者和受教者的关系就毫无意义。如果两者接受虚幻能量所左右，又何必一个施教，一个受教呢？啊，这样的教导是毫无价值的，因为受玛雅前置的人是不能成为权威的导师的。因此，要承认主 k r i s h a 是至尊主，在地位上高于生物体阿朱纳，一个被玛雅所困惑的健忘的灵魂。Yes. Omma jnana timarandasya jnana jala jala kaya chashu muni thandye na kasma shri guru ne namaha shri chaitanya mano vishtam sabitam yena putade sayam dhurma kamayam tadati sopram tiham. Bande ham shri guru shri yata pradakamalam shri guru vaishnavam sha shri rupa sabrajatam sahagana ragana tam vikam tam sachivam sarvayam sarvadukam parijana sahitam Krishna chaitanya devam. Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishaka Nishamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namaste Katahan Chana Gorangi Radhe Vrinda Vishwari Vrishabhanu Sukhehi Pranamani Hari Kriye Vancha Kapa Chaudhyasha Kripa Sindhu Bhaye Vacha Katika Mama Hebyo Vaishnaviyo Namo Namaha Namaha Vishnuvadaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Shamati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Sarasati Deve Gauravani Vajarine Nirvishesha Shunyapati Prasadya Vishakarine Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Kapu Nityananda Shri Adena Kratantara Shri Vasadhi Gauravakarinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare 
This is one of the very important slokas given in the Bhagavad Gita. And Lord Krishna is explaining about the nature of death. That we change from one body to another body. And Lord Krishna is a sober person, the word is dira, that he won't be disturbed by a change like this. And in the purport, Srila Prabhupada speaks, in fact, how the person will rejoice, he'll be happy to give up the old and diseased body to get a new body. Uh, Prabhupada is talking about Bhishma and Drona who are both elderly and Arjuna was worried that how can I fight and kill people like Bhishma and Arjuna who are worthy of my worship. But Srila Prabhupada argues that well, any elderly person will be happy to give up their old body. Then they're definitely going to get a better body in the future. The Prabhupada said either they will go to the spiritual world and have a spiritual body, or they will at least, at the very least, they'll go to the heavenly planets and have a body there. Lord Krishna is presenting this point to Arjuna because Arjuna was arguing that he thought it's not compassionate to fight in the battle. Compassion is an important quality of a, a devotee, of a, 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 of a, a thoughtful person. They, they, they don't just only think about their own self, but they think about the, the benefit of others. And so Arjuna was thinking that if he fought against people and killed people, this is not compassionate. But Lord Krishna is saying, no, actually that is compassion. You're helping them get a better body, a new body. So this verse is very important because it presents the argument that living entities by nature are all spiritual beings. And this will be presented again in the fourth chapter when Lord Krishna presents the history of the Bhagavad Gita. The history. That Lord Krishna is telling in the fourth chapter that he presented this knowledge to the sun god Vivishwan. And Arjuna was shocked. He said, What? You're you're just you and I are the same age. How could you teach the sun god? 
，然后在这边呢啊，就菩萨就对阿弥陀解释，就是说，菩萨把我家办一个这门知识呢，在上百万年前就向太阳神的巴斯凡来解释，阿弥陀听得很震惊，他说你跟这个太阳神。不一样的年龄啊，这已经上百万年。<笑> And Lord Krishna then went on to explain to Arjuna that many, many births both you and I have had, O、oh、Arjuna. I remember all of them, but you do not. 所以阿克赛地区对阿朱娜来说明呢，就是说，呃，你跟我啊，让一次又一次的出现，可是呢，我记得所有的一切，过去、现在、未来，可是你并不记得。This is the difference between Lord Krishna and Arjuna and all of us。但是呢，啊，嗯，我们大家还跟阿朱娜都是一样，这就跟 Krishna 不同的地方。Lord Krishna is the instructor, and we are in need of getting instruction. Ah, so Krishna is a instructor, and we are receiving instruction. We are not on the same level as Lord Krishna. We are not on the same level as Lord Krishna. We are not on the same level as Lord Krishna. He remembers all of his previous births. And we also had previous births, but we don't remember any of them. And we also have previous births, but we don't remember any of them. And we are thinking this life to be everything. Then we think this life is everything. So it's very important for us to understand our nature as a spiritual entity. 所以对我们来讲，这是很重要，就是我们本质是灵性的生物。And we can see how the material body goes through changes in the course of life. 嗯，啊，我们也可以见到呢，啊，这个物质身体在这个生命历程中的变换。Mm. And throughout life, Prabhupada says in the first word here that this, the body is changing at every moment. The different cells in the body are changing. But we don't feel any change. We still feel I'm the same. 可是我们没有去感觉到这些变化，我们还认为我们是一样同一个。But the body is changing constantly. 但是身体，这个物质身体是持续的在变化的。And not only human forms of bodies are changing, all living entities. 不只说人类的身体是在改变，所有生物的身体也是一直在改变的。There are six different phases in the course of the life of a body. First of all, the body takes birth. 嗯，首先呢，这个物质躯体的投生。Then it begins to grow. 它接着呃，就是在成长。And after some time, then it will become steady. It won't grow anymore. You fully grown. 然后再来有一段时间呢，会是很稳定的这样的持续，没有额外特别的增长。And then the body will produce some byproduct. <笑>然后身体会有副产品出生。Right, maybe you get married and you have children. 或许你就是结婚有小孩。The byproducts of the body. 身体的副产品。And then the body dwindles. And we all going to die one day. 嗯，接着呢，我们就是啊，到一个某一天就躯体死亡。But what is that? That is just the change of the body. 什么是死亡呢？死亡只是身体的改变。We will see in a few more verses. Lord Krishna compares the body to the dress. 嗯。啊，呃，我们后面几节诗也会听到，就是说，啊，菩萨把我们身体的这些情况的改变呢，就像是换这个衣服更换。And just as we give up the old clothes to get new clothes, we give up the old body to take a new body. 
，就好像我们呢换掉旧的衣服，穿上新的衣服，那就是啊，我们去掉呃换掉旧的身体，然后得到新的身体。And this has been going on eternally. 嗯，这是永远的，一直在进行着。We have had many many different bodies in the past. 我们在过去曾经有很多很多种不同的身体。Sometimes we were up in the higher planets in the body of a deva, demigod. 有时候呢，我们在一个在那高等的星球上是身为半神人。And、sometimes even we may have gone up to the position of Lord Brahma. 甚至有时候我们可能都已经到了啊婆罗诃摩梵天这样的位置。But we also go down. We go down into the lower species of life, and sometimes we become an insect or a worm crawling in the ground. <laughs> 那我们也曾经呢，到那个很低等的地狱星球，然后我们呢，出生为这个这个虫子啦，啊，各种虫子，然后在地上这样钻钻钻的滚着。And sometimes we can't take birth in a body of a plant, like. Or a tree. 嗯，而有时候我们呢，呃，投身个植物，然后就像树一样这样的在那儿。Stand with our feet in the ground, stuck in the ground. 嗯，我们脚就的深入土里被困住了，困在土里。Then you have to tolerate when the typhoon comes, it blows off your arm. 哈哈哈哈哈。然后台风来的时候，你的手背被这个风雨打断。Trees tolerate all of these things. 而树呢，包容所有一切的这一些外在变化。The trees also have some consciousness, but it's very much restricted. 嗯，树也是有一些知觉，但是被限制的很多。And then higher than plant life, you come to animal life, and you can live live in different animal bodies. 然后，如果以这个植物的身体再高等一点，就是投身为动物。但是呢，这动物也有很多种身体，很多种状况。And the amazing thing is that in every body, every different body which we're in, we're thinking, this is very nice and very happy here. 啊，一件令人惊讶的事就是说，我们不管在哪一个身体里面呢。我们都那么认同的，而且很高兴的啊！现在是有在在处于这个身体里。嗯、mm, ，It's described how one time there was a, a a powerful demigod called Indra, and he was disrespectful to his spiritual teacher Brihaspati. 嗯，啊，有一个呃典故呢，就是说曾经就是因陀罗呢。So Brihaspati thought I have to teach this Indra a lesson, so I'm going to curse him, let him become a pig. That Brihaspati 呢，就想说这个人呢这么不懂啊，我要给他教训，所以要咒他成为一啊，出生为一头猪。So Indra was put into the body of the pig. And he was living in the pig barn, and he was living with, you know, using the pig body. But every day the farmer was bringing food, and he was living there. 那这个因陀罗呢，就这样被降至这个猪的身体里面，然后住在那个猪圈里，跟他的一些猪朋狗友一起鬼混。And after some time, Brihaspati came and thought, "Okay, I think he's been in the body of the pig long enough. I've taught him a good lesson. I'll tell him come back now." So he went to Indra and he said, "Okay, so you come back now." 嗯，那呃一段时间之后 ，Brihaspati 就想说，啊，我把他惩罚了这段时间够了，应该让他回来，所以就告诉伊陀罗说，啊，你现在回来吧。But Indra said, "Oh no, I, I'm happy." I'm happy. I'm happy. But this Indra said, "Oh, don't go. I'm happy now. 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 I'm happy
I'm bringing big buckets. thinking, just like us, we are all living in this material world, and we are in a similar. We're thinking we're happy here. I have my bank account. I have my credit cards. I have my motor car, my mobile phone, my computer. I'm happy here. We're thinking we're happy. But others in the higher planets, the other living entities are looking at us and feeling sorry for us. And Lord Krishna is also feeling very sorry for us. And that's why he comes into this world. He comes to deliver transcendental knowledge, to awaken us to the reality of the truth. And the truth is to understand our transcendental nature as the spiritual being living in a temporary material body. So we want to understand how the living entity is a tiny part of the Supreme Lord. We are not equal to Lord Krishna. In Bhagavad Gita, when Lord Krishna speaks, then it says Sri Bhagavan Uvacha. But when Arjuna speaks, it's simply Arjuna Lord Krishna is the form of the absolute truth. And Arjuna is one of the conditioned souls, one of the living entities conditioned to the material world. Lord Krishna has come with Arjuna on the battlefield into this battlefield at Kurukshetra and he's going to deliver transcendental knowledge to Arjuna. So a few verses earlier, in text number 8 of this chapter, Arjuna had told Krishna, Shikshastiham sadimam tvam prapanam, that I am your disciple and a soul surrendered unto you. Please instruct me. So Lord Krishna immediately took the position of the teacher and he began to chastise Arjuna. So, so giving, giving spiritual knowledge doesn't mean to flatter people, but rather it means to crush their pride, to take away their pride. Therefore, Lord Krishna told Arjuna, Oh Arjuna, while speaking learned words, you are mourning for what is not worthy of grief. 
，所以克想对阿兹玛就说：“你说起来好像是很有学问的人，很明智。”Those who are wise lament neither for the living nor the dead. 嗯，那些明智的人既不为死亡的或是活着的事物来感伤。Now, that's a difficult thing to do, especially when you have people who are very near and dear to you. And when they depart from the world, then certainly we will feel some. Discomfort will feel the grief. Ah, ah, this situation is for people to say it is difficult to do. If you have friends or close friends, if they leave this world, you may feel sadness and grief. But we have to understand everything on the spiritual sense. But we have to understand everything on the spiritual sense. We have to see it with spiritual vision what is happening. The death is simply giving up one body. To take another one. Every day the body is changing. You have pictures of yourself maybe when you were a little baby. Could we ever recognize you know, who, is, who is this? Yeah, the body is completely different. But the soul is the same. We are all eternal spiritual beings. And Srila Prabhupada would bring this point out very clearly whenever people would approach him. And they would ask him, they would say, Swamiji, how old are you? And Prabhupada would say, I am the same age as you. I am a spiritual soul. You are also a spiritual soul. When I was a young man of twenty years old, you were old people. When I was a young man of twenty years old, you were old people. When I was a young man of twenty years old, you were old people. When I was a young man of twenty years old, you were old people. When I was a young man of twenty years old, you were old people. When I was a young man of twenty years old, you were old people. When I was a young man of twenty years old, you were old people. When I was a young man of twenty and we will continue taking different bodies unless we come to the Krishna consciousness. So Lord Krishna comes to this world to speak this transcendental knowledge in the form of Bhagavad Gita and to teach all of us how to get out of this material world. He said, simply surrender to me. Surrender to Krishna. You want to get free from birth and death? You want to avoid coming back again in this material world? You would like to go on to a better destination, to the spiritual world? There's a way to do it. We have to surrender to Krishna. And that surrender comes about by regularly chanting the holy name of Krishna. In this Kali Yuga, the process for self-realization is through chanting the holy name. We encourage people, we tell them, chant, chant, but they say, so we try 
to encourage people somehow to become Krishna conscious, make the best use of this human life. Human life is something special. We're fortunate to get the human body. There are 8,400,000 different species of life and only 400,000 are human species. So we are fortunate, and we are even more fortunate because we have the association of the There are so many places in the world which are not so fortunate where it's not so easy to get the association of a Krishna conscious community. So we are fortunate if we take advantage of that association, we can cross over the ocean of material existence. Material existence is like a big ocean, but if we take shelter of Lord Krishna, that ocean is reduced to a tiny insignificant amount of water. So, surrendering to Krishna is the solution to the problem of material existence. And we show our surrender by chanting the holy names of Krishna and reading books like Bhagavad Gita, which are the words of Krishna. Krishna spoke this Bhagavad Gita for benefit of people in this Kali Yuga that we can all be awakened. Just by if you just simply give a little attention to hear this message of Bhagavad Gita, it can change our life. What kind of changes would it mean? We would, we would begin by giving up bad habits. Bad habits like intoxication, gambling, meat eating, these things. Things which are not doing us any good, which are not helping us at all. So when we move in that direction, that's a sign that our life is changing, that we're, we're moving in the, in the, in the proper direction. Krishna consciousness is within the heart of all living entities and it has to be awakened and the awakening process is by hearing. So we thank all of you for coming here this afternoon and hearing patiently. Are there any questions? In, in my own opinion, it's uh, impossible to understand nature, but we try to do it. We pray, worship, 
dance and help people serve God. To make Krishna happy, we need to remember him and not forget him and he will make you happy. No question, it's just a comment. <laughs> Do you agree with me? <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Ah, Okay, any other question? Yes? The purport is you mentioned about this theory of ref reflection. Yes. Can we apply to super soul and also to us? So can you explain to this? Reflection? The theory of reflection in the purport. Just sometimes Chinese. Theory of reflection. Theory. Theory. Yeah, in the purport it talks about the theory of reflection. It comes on the theory of reflection can be applied to the super soul who is present in each and every individual body and is known as the Paramatma. But, but after it says the Maya body theory, Maya body theory, and then it goes on. Yes. We want to understand the super soul. We will explain how this is a theory of re reflection. How many super souls are in this room? <laughs> one. <laughs> that one super soul is reflected in the heart of every living entity. The example is given just like the sun is in the sky and the sun will be reflected on so many different places. On, for example, on a pool of water, there will be a reflection of the sun. Uh, in a mirror, you see a reflection of the sun. In the similar way, the, the one super soul, that one super soul who is actually Shirodakash and Vishnu, one of the Purusha avatars, Vishnu expands into the heart of every living entity. And the super soul is there for a purpose. He's giving remembrance, knowledge, and he also allows forgetfulness. You may think you're very busy, 
<laughs> Just think how busy the super soul is. Acting on everyone's heart. The super soul knows each and every living entity situation. He knows about each and every one's happiness and distress. I know my happiness and distress, but I don't know all of your happiness and distress. We each know our own happiness and distress. We don't know about others so well. But the super soul knows about everyone. Just like the landlord, you know, <laughs> the landlord, we have a landlord here, it's not our place. You know? <laughs> the landlord knows about each and every property they own. We know about this one property which we're renting from him, but he knows about all of his properties. So super soul is like the landlord. He knows about everyone, what's going on with everyone. And that one super soul is there. Reflected in everybody's heart. So he's different from the living entity. So when we speak about the soul, to understand there are two souls. There's the individual soul, the living entity, which we call the jiva. And there's a param atma, the super soul. Two birds in the tree. The body is like the tree, and in this body, in the heart, there are the two souls. One bird. Is eating the fruit. And sometimes the fruit is sweet, sometimes the fruit is bitter. And the other bird? Is watching the witness. The super soul is the witness to all of that activity. We don't remember. I don't remember all the bad things I did. <laughs> but the super soul remembers. And we get the results of these things. And so super soul is, a, is described in Bhagavad Gita as Upadrasta and Anamanta. Upadra means the overseer and the permitter of activity. Mm. The super soul is there in the heart and he's watching us. He's 
telling us, oh, don't do that. No, no, that's a stupid thing to do. But we're saying, oh, come on, I want to do it. I want, you know, I want to do it. I want to do it. And, and then so finally, we say, okay, go ahead, you know. And then, and then slam, you get walloped, you get beaten. <laughs> 啊,不要去做這個,這個對你不好,這個不好,可是我們個體靈魂就說,哎呀,不要,不管你啦,我就是要做,我們就是這種愚蠢的玩固不不聽你的做。So <笑> like this, this is how the super soul is functioning, it's reflected in the heart of everyone. 所以這是超靈他的進行功能的狀態。so we're just going to Sara. We're very tiny parts of the Supreme Lord. So we So we are the marginal potency. That we can reside either in the material realm or in the spiritual realm. We can't remain in the margin. Either you're in Maya or you're with Krishna. 然后即便在我们本质,可是我们不可能处于边际状态,我们或者在物质的玛雅,或者是我们在灵性的状态。So Arjuna was in Maya, but he's got Krishna with him, and Krishna is going to bring him out of Maya, and bring him to Krishna consciousness. 那阿朱娜先前呢,是在物质的玛雅里面,那Krishna呢,把他带出来,就是说进到Krishna之觉。so today is the auspicious day of Gopastami. Lord Krishna uh, becomes, uh, he grows up he begins, from taking care of the calves, he starts taking care of the cows. So it's, it's a festival, we worship the cow today, today we also we went to see the cows and we offered a little worship to the cows. Mm -hmm. So we're remembering Lord Krishna and we're remembering all of the cows and we're praying that we can also become more Krishna conscious. So